Matthew, this particular combine unit here, harvested the uh, uh, cornfield out there. And what its job was, was to capture the corn kernels and get them off that cob and then be able to have them delivered to an elevator and then on to a mill or a ethanol plants. But what it does is it pulls the stock down and in the process then leaves the stocks out there. With the yields that we're now achieving in, in corn fields, that's way too much residue left behind. So now the equipment that's on display out here now with, re, with a flail chopper, that its job is to remove a certain level of that corn and leave a good portion of that still in the field. And then the baler follows that to make the bale of corn stalks. That machine has been specifically now adapted and built for a corn stalk harvest. And then we have the machine there that's making that pile of corn stalk bales over there on the far side of the field. And that's all essentially 47% sugar in those stalks. So you could say it's a bale of corn stover, you could say it's a bale of sugar. Well, flail mower is a machine that's used in this case to cut corn stalks. So you got a 20 foot length of material here. So it takes 20 feet of material in one swat and brings it all to one side of the machine right here. And the resulting wind row is formed right behind us over here. This machine then helps to accumulate the material into all one spot with one pass down the field and one pass back this way. That's 40 feet of material to make one wind row that the baler is now able to capture. And as you can also see, there's still lots of residue left on this ground for, to ensure soil quality is met. And even with the uh, wet conditions that we've got here uh, from, for this season, you'll notice there is no uh, issues of rutting or compaction that are occurring. And again, these stocks are very, very high moisture for the circumstance that we're in. Okay, so when you're bailing corn stover, you need to have a highly efficient operation and you need to make a, a, a good, solid, dense bale that are easy to stack as well as uh, load and move on trucks and you can max out your truck weights. We call it a large square baler, but it actually makes a rectangular bale that's approximately four feet by three feet by eight feet. And we try to get our dry matter density or the, the amount of material that the refiner can use in that bale up into the 12 pound per cubic foot range. But this material is very wet. And what we can tell you is that each one of those bales that's being made out here in the field today probably weighs in the area of 22 to 2300 pounds total weight. The dry matter will probably be in the area of about 1300 pounds. To also make it efficient, you see that, that all of these machines are operating simultaneously in the field. So you're having a uh, wind row is, uh, is being made by the shredder, this, this cutting and chopping the material and putting it into a wind row so that the baler then can follow behind it and pick up the material and make a bale. And then to be followed by this stinger, which is, is picking up the bale uh, and can carry yeah, seven bales and, make, and put it into a stack. So um, all in all, you have a very highly efficient operation. We have our Optiform uh, bale uh, chamber, which is about 16 inches longer than, than the previous model. It has a heavier flywheel, heavier shear bolts. We made a lot of those changes specifically for biomass or, or corn stover, if you will, because it's a very tough material and these, these balers also are operating not only in this t tough material, uh, because all of this material has to be collected in roughly a 30 to 45 day period of which you can probably only work maybe 22 to 25 of those days. Uh, the, our farm here is uh, 450 acres. It's not all in one location. It's in, right in the center of the municipality of Brook Alveston in Lambton County. On this field this year is 120 acres of corn. Well, uh, the biggest challenge will be the equipment and it will be basically impossible for an individual farmer unless he has a significant size to afford the equipment. So it would be a co-op type idea, uh, somewhat like they operate in the states where maybe there's one fella that's 14 to 20 machines and it's, it's a big business then. So that would be the way here that we would have to go. The positive part is that uh, you've taken uh, the bulk of the stock away but you still have left enough to stop soil erosion and it'll, it'll just dry out quicker in the spring. If there are some dollars there, uh, suddenly all of a sudden it becomes more viable. We have government officials here today, we have banks here today. Everybody has to understand they've all got a role to play in this exercise and what the opportunities are. 
and farmers are going to buy in because farmers have a problem. It's too much residue. They can't plant the next spring. And bottom line, this will become a new revenue source for farmers while providing society with brand new products from a new source that they never had before.